Hello! Well, I'm on to the second video. Um, this one is for a stringed instrument I made. It is a rough replica, I'll put it that way, because I know that there are many things that are not um, true to the actual original, but it is a rough replica of a Anglo-Saxon lyre, uh, L-Y-R-E. Um, I learned that lyres differ from uh, harps in that uh, the strings are parallel roughly to the soundboard and not actually coming out of the soundboard as a harp does. Um, this one is made out of uh, maple uh, with a soundboard of hickory on the back. Uh, the method of construction was that I took a piece of maple and drew out the area that I wanted to have as the sound chamber, the hollow sound chamber, um, and took a Forstner bit, then um, basically um, ground off the tip in the middle of the Forstner bit that keeps it centered. Um, so that way, basically, it was a flat, a flat cutting uh, drill bit. And then just went in and uh, drilled out with my drill press, um, you know, as much as I dared. I, you know, I may have left an eighth of an inch, uh, so I put a stop on the drill press and just, you know, went down and, and moved it around and uh, drilled out as much as I could. In the um, more authentic ones, they have uh, the actual hollow chamber goes up into the arms. Uh, seeing that this was the first one I made, I wasn't too sure about how strong it was going to be. So I stopped uh, with the hollow area here. And then um, just had some uh, real thin um, eighth of an inch, I believe, uh, hickory. And so I glued two, two pieces of it together and then uh, glued it onto the back to keep, to keep it out of the way because I didn't really want that transition from hickory to uh, maple to be seen, even on the first one. Uh, what else? Uh, there's zither pins up here. It has um, low. It has uh, nylon strings, uh, guitar strings. Uh, they say to use the high pitched guitar strings, but uh, since this was my first one, I thought, well, I just want to use whatever guitar strings I have handy. So I used the lowest pitched guitar strings here instead. Um, the bridge is made out of hickory. Uh, when I first made the bridge, it was uh, as thin as the top of the bridge is, but it kept falling over. So I glued on two little feet at the bottom. Um, let's see, on the back here, I'm kind of ashamed of this, uh, where uh, basically I was in a very big hurry to finish this up uh, and uh, just grabbed a piece of hickory and just drilled uh, six little thin holes and then uh, put the strings through and tied them off. So, um, what else about this? Um, there's three dots here that you might be able to see. There's a dot up here, a dot down there, and then there's actually a dot underneath the bridge. Uh, the reasons for those dots is that uh, I was messing around uh, with my tuning fork and uh, basically hitting the tuning fork and then you know you can't really hear anything with it and then you press it on uh, a sound area, a soundboard area, and it becomes much louder. So I was just you know complimenting myself that the soundboard was actually working. Um, but then I started moving the actual uh, tuning fork around and I noticed that there were uh, hot spots where uh, the sound coming out of the soundboard was much louder than other areas. So I found these three spots. Uh, I tried putting the bridge on the first spot here, but the bridge, because of the, um, the angle of the strings at this point, it kept just knocking the bridge over. Um, so I decided to compromise and go with the, uh, the second hot spot. Um, let's see, is there anything else about it? Uh, it's tuned to the uh, minor pentatonic scale. So you have uh, the unison or, or perfect first, the, uh, the tonic. And then you have um, the minor third, which is uh, six to five uh, in mathematical ratio. And then the perfect fourth, which is uh, four thirds. The perfect fifth, which is uh, three to two. The minor seventh, which I believe is um, 16 to nine. And then finally the octave, which is uh, two to one. Uh, I chose this scale because uh, it's uh, a, a scale that's used in, uh, and I might have spoken about this before, this scale is used in, um, in some, um, some where they want, you want to teach children to, to play with music or to, to express themselves musically, but you want to make sure that when they play they don't hear sour notes. And the definition, I think, of what you call a sour note is really a sour interval or a sour melody change where you hit one note and then you went up to another note and the, the actual uh, interval between the two is very dissonant. So uh, with this uh, method, uh, rather with this um, tuning, 
there is no way you can actually hit a sour note. You can you can go from any string to any other string in any combination and any you know anything like that, and you cannot produce a bad note. Uh, the um, disadvantage of this is that uh, there's not many songs you can play on it. Uh, uh, traditional songs that would use a um, a diatonic scale. But you can just uh, improvise on this all day until you know you're, you get tired. So allow me to uh, play a few notes for you, and then uh, do a little do a little um, a little mini um, melody. And to quickly talk about it, um, there is, uh, you can put a strap on the back that actually holds your hand in place and you, a different way of playing this instrument is where you would hold your fingers on each of the notes and you can actually, if you can do it like that, hold uh, the thumb across two notes. So now you've blocked them off and you would, you know, play. So since no uh, string is free right now, you get a very muted tone. So, and also it's kind of hard because normally you'd have your uh, hand very well fixed in position because of the strap, so you could hold it like this and not have to worry about it, and you'd have a, a plenum or a pick that you could stroke, uh, uh, strum across and basically play chords and such. And there's a lot of people on YouTube that uh, have done this, and I'd recommend just looking up uh, Lyre or uh, Anglo-Saxon Lyre, uh, and you'll find a lot of good uh, examples of it. So anyways, uh, that's, this is my latest uh, musical instrument. Well, actually, I tell a lie. Um, last night, just for the fun of it, uh, I made a bull roar. And uh, it was really just a strip of wood, hickory, uh, about this big, and about an eighth of an inch wide, as usual. Uh, I took and drilled a hole close to the end, but not right at the end, and uh, as small of a hole as possible that I could thread some string through. Uh, tied the string off uh, with, a, with a pretty bulky knot. And then uh, went outside and just twirled it around, and it, that was it. You know, made a bull roar in five minutes, really. So it's a it's a something that anybody could make uh, very quickly, uh, as YouTube videos will show. So um, that's about it for now. Thanks for watching. Bye.